don't you still go back to being that boy that in the wonder of it, you know, it's always the whitetail we come back to, isn't it? Make versus country your country. Mike is hunting with Cottonwood Whitetails Outfitters in northeastern Montana, smack dab in the middle of the rut. But can he take one from the ground? It's a rut in November on the Milk River. Can't think of a better time to be here. My annual pilgrimage up here, been going about five years, my sixth year coming. No place like it for bow hunting in North America, in my opinion. When I met Elliot and Luke Stroman five or six years ago, we decided to put a couple of hunts together. Oh, nice shot, Mike. Didn't have a lot of expectations. I knew they were good guys, great traditional bow hunters and all that. I had a lot of fun doing it. He's killed some good Pope and Young bucks up here. And, and this year, we know we've been talking. He's going to be hunting up here in the rut. And we just decided, you know, he's going to hold out for a real good mature buck. Not necessarily big, but we'd like it to be big, just like anybody else, you know, but uh, definitely mature. One really great thing about Cottonwood Whitetails and the Stroman place and where we're hunting there is it's bow only all season. And that kind of makes it special because you're up close and personal hunting these deer without having any rifle pressure on the place at all at any point in the season. When I got here, I just couldn't believe. Pure whitetail gold is what I found on the Milk River. Sometimes during the day we do a little nudges or whatever to sort of double your opportunities there. And when you're on the ground, you need all your help you can get. Before I could get in and get my ground blind set up, normally I'd have deer coming in, rutting by. That's the biggest one right there coming at us. I don't know, there's another big one up there. It might be bigger than the dark one. Yeah. That's a lot big, better than I saw. But so. the big buck one. That was. Okay. That was a big one. All right. Another one was probably a shooter in that about four smaller bucks. Yeah, this is just tore up in here. You get to see it all the way by. Good thing about that is it didn't take long. No, that was great, man. I'm going to go do another one. Okay. So, you know, you get my stuff. A natural deadfall can be a great elevated stand. First, assuming the tree's in good shape. What do you think, Mike? We break a few places. All right. Love to do it. It's also an absolute match for the surroundings and one that the deer have always been used to. But even with a natural stand, it's important to clear branches to open shooting lanes. You know, we shot some great animals, Pope and Young, uh, 125s, 130s. And I said, you know, this year, guys, I'm going to try to hold out for a 140. And that's not easy for me to do, because when a Pope and Young comes by, usually I got an arrow flying in the air. But I wanted to kind of raise my standards a little bit. Well, we got about an hour left of shooting late. We'll go see what we can do with it. All right. Dang, hand back. You still got it. Still got it. That works. Boy, it's kind of nice. I can see you from a mile away with this thing. <laughs> Tough bow hunting in orange. Yeah, it is. It feels I awkward, it's doesn't it? Purely psychological. It's got to be. <clears throat> You think they can see it, but they can't, you know. Yeah. What you think? Yeah. So we decided we're going to do a ground game up here, and it is tough. There is nothing like bow hunting whitetails on the ground for pure in your face action and all that. Magnify that when you start doing it during the rut because you've got opportunities for bucks cruising around, chasing does, maybe fighting, a lot of rut behavior going on, bucks coming by grunting. He is rutted. He don't know what the hell he's doing. What about this giant yeah. down here? Yeah. There's one right on the fence line, too. Mike. There, there he goes, goes across. You can just see his body side. Yeah. Make it up. 
They're so used to traffic here, a guy really can get away with this. It's kind of nice. Oh, it's unbelievable. But a lot of people would look at what we're doing right now and say, this has got to be a high fence, some sort of sanctuary, yeah. whatever. This is Milk River, some of the best bow hunt in the world. It's my first trip out here during the rut because usually I come uh, early. Yeah. And it's just phenomenal, as you can see, all the bucks that we've seen today. Chases, all the big bucks got a, a doe and they're right with them. You know, it's bow only, and it's done right, and you manage it right, and you, it's just, it's awesome. It makes it for fun, doesn't it? And I'm going to kill one tomorrow, I hope. So. That works. All right, let's go. Let's go get some stuff here. The simplest things are not always the easiest, like hunting a mature buck on the ground with a bow and arrow. Just like the rest of this trip, I'm on the wrong side of the tree, but he was definitely the shooter, the first buck, and nothing but five hours left. Before. Let's go get us, see what happens. If you spend enough time on the ground among a group of rutting whitetails, you will be able to recognize some of them on sight. This aggressive old battler, named Lop Ear, is recognizable after one glimpse. He's an aggressive buck. He's got a broken ear, a broken brow tine on one side, and his eyes been kind of gored. And I said, man, I, I wish that deer would come in. He's an old deer. He's a dominant deer. I'd love to get a shot at that deer. And I look over, and I mean, here he comes. I mean, he's got fire in his eyes. And I'm trying to draw my bow. I can't draw. And this buck comes in eight yards dead on. And you can't take that shot in bow hunting. You can't do it. You got to wait till that deer is either broadside or quarter away. Finally, his doe kind of bust off a little bit, following the doe in. Tried to stop him, you know, and he got out there about 37 or 38. What can you say? Part of bow hunting is missing. If you've not missed animals, you know, there's a lot of people not telling you the truth. I call them liars or whatever. You know, I miss my share of bucks, and every bow hunter does. That was a lot beard buck. He was right in here at 10 yards, and I couldn't get drawn on him. I couldn't stop him until he was about 35. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. I could have made the shot, should have made the shot. It's just a lot of fun. Mike and I get along so well, and uh, he just gets along with everybody in camp, and <laughs> we have fun when we're together, and I hope it shows. You know, and I don't need to come up here and experience a kill to have a great time. I was here to get an opportunity on the ground at a mature buck like that, and it happened, and I didn't close the deal, and there's only one good thing about that. I can come back and see old Luke and Elliot next year and go for it again during the rut. And that's part of the whitetail revolution.